Hi, my name is Justin. I'm an undergrad student at FIU in Miami, Florida. Uh, this semester I took Embedded Operating Systems EEL 4734 with Dr. Pons. Um, today I will be giving you a presentation on Embedded Linux, what the course entails, and briefly show you the, what I thought was the hardest part, which was getting started. Because once you know C, once you know a little bit about programming, the rest is easy. Um, the initial setup of your virtual machine is really difficult. Um, understanding what BeagleBorn is, is a little difficult to understand. Um, while we have the camera turned this way, let me first start out by showing you the board you'll be using for the course. It's called BeagleBone Black. You can go to this website right here. You can order them. I think it's $45. Um, the things this thing can do is insane. Uh, they have a little projects page. I recommend you check that out. It shows you different projects people use uh, this board with. And here is the board, just so you know what you're looking at. You can see there is also the mini uh, USB, which is how we will be connecting the board. Right, so let's get started with the presentation. Alright, uh, so Introduction into Embedded Linux uh, by Justin Wilson. Um, like I said, I just want to give you a tutorial on uh, setting up your virtual machine and uh, what, how to make your first program probably in BeagleBone. Um, like I said, the course is EEL4734. Let me show you the book we used. It is entitled Embedded Linux Primer. It is by Christopher Hallman. Uh, it's a great book. I liked it. It gave you a lot of step-by-step uh, -step instructions and it kind of really opened my eyes to uh, what Linux is all about. Uh, let's move on to the topics we will be talking about. The course. Uh, I think we talked about that. BeagleBone Black. I showed you the board. It, you know, It's great. Uh, the things you can do with it are amazing. Um, and I want to help you set up your virtual machine and compile your first program in BeagleBone. And I would also like to show you Eclipse, um, see how uh, it runs. So let's start by closing this. First things first, you're going to want to download Ubuntu. Um, for this project, I'm doing the 32-bit. It works pretty well for me. Um, so you just go to the Ubuntu website slash download slash desktop. Uh, I'm doing the 12.04. Uh, I'm not really sure about 13.04 yet. I haven't really tried it. Um, but oops, so that's what you need to try. Also, you're gonna need to download VM Player. There's a free one. It's kind of hard to find. Um, just Google VM Player free uh, downloads and then go to Player. Got some advertisements here. And just hit download. It's that easy. Um, I already have VM Player installed on my computer. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Just uh, download it. Um, let's start out by making the virtual machine. So, this is what VM Player looks like. I already have a lot of VMs open up. So, let's do this. So, what we're going to do is create a new virtual machine. Um, here's the wizard. It's pretty straightforward, easy to use. Um, I recommend doing the install, the operating system later, just get it all set up. I feel like it's a cleaner install. I, I prefer it. Hit Linux, Ubuntu. Uh, let's call this one Linux Video. Scroll Video. And hit Next. Um, I like to store it as a single disk just so it's all in one place and you don't get file confusion. As you can see, I have a lot of virtual machines and I just don't like things to get to move around too much. Alright, so it's all done. So here it is. What I'm going to do now is uh, edit the machine. I like to put two gigs in it just to make it a little quicker. You know, most machines nowadays uh, you have a lot of memory space, you can dedicate a little bit more to it. The second thing is, since we didn't install it, um, the ISO, we have to put it here. So in virtual machine settings, go to CD slash DVD. 
uh, use ISO image and browse. I left mine on the uh, the desktop. Let's see what here it is Ubuntu. Hopefully. And let's make this the processors. Let's put two cores. I have you know I have a quad core processor. I uh, just dedicate a little bit more to make it a little quicker. So okay. Alright, and let's play virtual machine. It's doing now is virtual machine found all of my uh, you know my wireless card, my USB, and my camera so I can continue doing this presentation. So hit OK. So this is what you would typically see if you uh, did a you know like a partition. Um, you would see this screen come up. It would take up the whole screen. But you know in virtual machine, it, I recommend it more than doing the uh, partitioning. You know you can go back and forth between Windows and Linux pretty quickly. That's the main reason I do it. Also, the driver capabilities. Um, when I ran it the first time, I did it on a extra laptop I had, and finding the drivers was really difficult for me. Um, and this way, it finds it all for you. It's pretty convenient. All right, so it looks like it's building. So let's select our language. We're going to go with English. It's my language. Uh, we're going to install Ubuntu. Hit the double click. So what it does is it goes through a pre-install for you. Um, let's not download updates. We can do that later. Um, we have internet connection, so it looks good. So we're going to continue. Um, since this is a partition, I mean a virtual machine, you can just do erase disk and install Ubuntu. It's, and it looks like we are ready. Install now. This process is a little long, so I might be cutting in and out of the video. Um, just not to uh, waste time and bore you. One thing cool about this operating system is that it asks you questions, kind of like to keep you entertained while it downloads. Like right now, it just asks me, where are you from? You know, put New York. I'm going to put Miami because I'm in Miami, Florida. Also, I think you can move it down here. Not Havana, not NASA. It's for Miami. It's so much easier. Sorry about that. I am in Miami Beach. Okay, continue. Now, uh, keyboard layout. Um, English. America, USA. Like I said, it's a slow process. Just bear with it. Alright, so this is uh, your name for the computer. It's just your name. Justin, it's my name. Uh, your name, I don't like to do this. Let's change this. Uh, let's put uh, one, two, underscore VM. Okay. It warns you a little bit, so just put it into the uh, there you go. Choose a password, type in any password you want, it doesn't matter, it's too short. And require my password login. I like to do that. It's, it's kinda cool. So we'll continue.
Alright, so um, I'll probably cut the video here um, and let the rest of the install happen, then I'll catch you when it's up and running. Alright, good news, it looks like it came back up, so just wait for it to uh, get to the login screen. Alright, so you're looking at the login screen right now. Uh, the password in that we had decided. And we're up and running. So this is what Ubuntu looks like. Um, you have everything you need here. You have your Safari. Uh, you have a free version of like kind of like an office here. Um, kind of like an app store here to download some stuff. We'll be using this to download Eclipse. And you know, system settings. You want to change your background, so forth. You can do it all from there. All right, now that this is up and running, let's just minimize this so we can install the BeagleBone. All right, so now that we know that it's plugged in, just go to my computer and you will see your BeagleBone down here. Alright, so here it is. Uh, just like the instructions say, we need to go to start. Now, I would not open this with yeah, Internet Explorer. There's a lot of issues with that. So, let's see how we can open it with something else. Let's see what happens. Well, it worked. Um, here you go. They recommend you use uh, Firefox. This worked. Close all this. So here you get some, you know, kind of instructions on everything about the board. Um, what we're going to need to do is, <coughs> excuse me, download the drivers. Um, depending on what operating system you have. Uh, you know, you just find it here and get the installer. And you can just go through here, it kind of gives you everything you need to know about the Beagle Bone and how to do it. Um, when downloading the drivers, let me tell you now, you're going to get some errors from Windows um, saying it doesn't support it and uh, a lot of other things. Um, not to worry, it's completely safe. Just hit yes and you'll run anyways. Okay? So Beagle Bone should be successfully installed now. On to there. So like I said, uh, you'll get the Beagle Bone. You'll get a cable. All comes in the box and a little instruction menu. So let's just plug in the USB. There's it and then plug the other end into your computer. Alright. Alright, so now we have it connected, the drivers are installed. Let's go into terminal. So just type in, let me show you again. This little box up here is kind of like a search for everything, kind of like a spotlight. Type in the word terminal. And you can just click here. All right, now we need to communicate with the board. So we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to SSH. So we can do this by SSH. The IP address that's already assigned to it is 192.168.7.2. We're going to do dash L and type in root for login. So I should go. Type in your password for root, which is no password. Just hit enter. So now you're successfully in the, the Beagle Bone. Okay. Now what you're gonna need to do is install some packages onto it. Um, it's already installed on mine, but you should do it on yours. So type in sudo apt slash get 
update first, which is not found. It's fine. We need to do is the Armstrong. Just download an op kg install g plus plus. Now this will install g plus plus on the Armstrong. All right. So now let's just make our first program. Let's make sure it runs. Uh, by the way, you can even search the directory here. You can find you have desktop. You can change directory to the desktop. You know, you can, you can do all sorts of things on here. Uh, it's case sensitive, of course. Um, search all the files. Um, let's first let's do a VI to edit the board to make the program. So type in VI. And I'll call this video. C plus plus. Enter. Now you'll be in the uh, the VI editor. So we just gotta type in our first program here, which is pretty easy to do. So um, let's just let's just do something that says hello or something like that. All right. So let's make that program. Let's just make something simple. All we want to do is do is say hello world. Um, so think of this just like any other editor. You need to type in a program. So let's do. Uh, click insert. Forgot all about that. To include. Using uh, we need namespace std colon uh, name spell it right and see out what we want it to say. Let's say hello world most basic most used C program. And now, colon, return, here, colon, and close it all out. Alright, so there it is, our first program. It's just going to say hello world. Uh, we just want to make sure that the BeagleBone can compile it and can run the program. So now we want to hit escape. Colon, uh, right quit. All right, so it should be there. Uh, now to run it, we have to do dot slash video. Linux does not care about the uh, the C plus plus. You just type in the name of the file. So No such file. Let's, let's go back and check see what I did wrong here. I mean, as you can see, there are a lot of a lot of problems with Linux. That you know, even me, after taking the class, there's still some issues I need to figure out. So let's see. We can do G plus plus video dot c plus plus dash o slash video do more video dot c p p see the file it's good to me so let's try it again to compile it.
still having errors. So let's see how we can solve these errors. Alright, so we're back in VI again to try to figure out what's wrong here. Uh, the only issue with running with VI is that you do not have the ability to really debug. And C, as you may know, is a little unforgiving. And right away I found my error. It's not ISO streaming, it is iOS. And let's try this again. With the right quit WQ. Now let's try doing it again. So let's do G plus plus video dot cpp dash o plus video. And we got no errors, so we know it worked. So let's now view the directory and see what's on here. And at the bottom now, down here, we can see that video did compile. So now it's time to see what video actually does. And it says hello world. So we were able to compile it successfully. Okay. Alright, now that we are able to compile and make programs, uh, C++ programs on our board, let me show you what Eclipse is. Um, it's more of a user interface. It's kind of better to use. Let's just close this out. Go to your uh, your software center. Actually, let's do a see if we can do this here. Let's go to terminal. Type in sudo sudo apt slash get update just to update. This is going to update all the uh, the software downloads. Let's do that. I'm glad that's there. Let's go back to the software center. Alright, so this is your software center. Um, let's just type it in. Let's see. And it is right here. Now this is Ubuntu, so you know mostly everything is free. You do see some things where people are asked to charge, but for stuff like this, just hit install. Type your password as the one you use to log into. And just authenticate. I'm pretty glad that that showed up. It showed you, you know, that you do need some programming experience to be able to uh, handle this course. If there is a lot of programming involved. Let's just close this. I'm also going to show you how to make this bigger. It's kind of annoying just having this like half screen operating system running. So let's let this install and uh, I'll get back to you. Alright, uh, Eclipse downloaded. So we can now exit the store. There's Eclipse. Here's Eclipse down here. Let's, let's get this thing downloaded. Let's see, we can start. To, you can use this to write all your C program, and then just transfer it to, to the uh, to the BeagleBone. Not much here. So this is what it looks like uh, when you first download Eclipse. It's only meant to to do Java. That's what it only supports. So unfortunately, you have to go in and add all the stuff that you wanted to do. In our case we wanted to do C++. So I always like to uh, check for updates first. There's always plenty of updates that need to be done. So it looks like it came back with a lot of updates. Let's hit next. Uh, we want all of them next. You know, except 
let it do its thing. So let's let it do this, and uh, I'll come back to you when this is done. All right, we're back. Updates are done. You're gonna have to restart Eclipse. It says you can try to do it without it. I don't recommend it. It never really worked for me. All right, so now we're here. Now we need to install the packages uh, that we need for C++. So it's all new software. So this is what it looks like. We need to type in CDT. Let's see what comes up with this one. I'm not sure if this is it, but we'll check. And it is too small. So the main problem with Linux is that you, you run into errors. You're pretty much on your own. That's why I'm hoping this video helps you out. Let's exit. Let's go ahead and install the, uh, the VM tools. Give us a bigger screen. Yes. So this is doing is kind of mounting a CD for us. Uh, with all some different tools we need. I like to put it on the desktop. Double click it. Okay, so that's all we need. So let's uh, open with archive mounter. Why it's not working? I don't know. We just need to extract this basically. So let's extract it. Let's put it on the desktop as well. Files extract. So I put everything on the desktop for you. All right, so everything's in there. So here you are. Um, it gives you a little tutorial how to do it. Tells you how to install it. So what you need to do is go to terminal, go to uh, dir, change directory to desktop. Uh, let's, let's view the directory again. What we need is the change directory. I wonder if we can do run vm. It tells you how to do it here. Yeah, let's just run the VM software. Yeah, it's right here. It's just right here.
Just go through the list here and install everything you see. Say yes to everything, it's not going to do it, ruin anything. Let it initialize. I'll get back to you when this is done. And we're back. Uh, it finished. Like I said, just hit yes and no to everything. Restart your machine. And you'll be able to get a bigger screen. Makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? Um, Alright, so let's go back to Eclipse. Hopefully we can see the whole picture this time. All right, what we need is main, and we also need optional. So let's start with the main next. Unfortunately, you can't do these two at the same time. It doesn't work. Why, I don't know. It just doesn't. So install the packages. Uh, well, this is downloading. Let's also go download uh, our, our remote system explorer. Alright, now we need to go to this website, which is http downloadeclipseorg slash tm slash downloads slash drops let's see oh, let's see downloads so you can find it nope stop it so what we need is the remote system explorer it should be somewhere in here and we're almost done with this while well, we have this open. Let's download the other CDT. And it's optional. Next. Next, let's accept. Alright, now we need to go back here. Looking for 4.2. And I say we, uh, you know, we download the run times. The repo, I guess. Uh, Let's go to TN.
Okay, so I'm gonna close this out. Uh, you should have this downloaded. Check out downloads. Downloads. And we have the repo. So we can close this out. Let's close everything out. Let's open the clips again. Do not see C++. So what we're going to have to do is do a clean install. So you need to go to terminal. So sudo eclipse and clean it up. Close it one more time. Close this. And now we reopen it, it should be there. Alright, like I said, it should be there. So C++ is successfully downloaded it. Now we can actually compile in C++. Now we need to set up the remote arm. Now this is the most difficult part. I've had lots of trouble with this. I'm hoping it works. So let's close this out and do what we gotta do. Um, we downloaded the arm earlier. So let's open up our tools. Downloads. And let's put this to the desktop too. Just keep everything on the desktop, it's easier. Close this out. And let's extract all this to the desktop. Right, extract. Alright, let's make a new folder. Let's take on with content. Alright, now it's open. Here. We need to actually let's just let's just do the command version. I guess it's a little easier. Let's go to terminal. Change director. This is the difficult part that I faced in this entire project: um, not being able to copy. See if we can do it through here. Just 
some files. Uh, user share. You can find Eclipse. That'd be great. Eclipse. <sighs> Features and plugins. So. So now we know where it's at. So let's do all to Alright now this gives us the ability to basically do everything that we did in sudo but in uh, kind of a GUI version, so this makes it a little easier. Eclipse, Eclipse, pull this up here. Let's in repo. So features, features. We have to copy all these. Let's go back plugins plugins the copy all these the plugins Pretty much it. Now everything should be installed into Eclipse here. So let's run Eclipse and see if it worked. C plus plus. Now we got to go to uh, Windows and show view and go to others now we have to find remote system so if it's in here it works remote systems it worked so let's click remote systems Make a new connection, and it's not working. Show view, and let's go over. Remote system this time, see if that helps. Looks like it did. So let's add a new connection. Select Linux. Next. Uh, host name. Let's do that. Let's see connection. Let's do the IP here. 192.168.0.0. Let's hit next. Let's do what should we do? We should do SSH actually here. And we can do that will give us a shell. That looks good. So next. Click shell. Next. Say shell. Next.
initially it is finished. And it's connected. Uh, for ID, put root. No password. You can save password because there is none. And this will tell you if it gets connected or not. Right, and it's connected. So you are now in your Beagle Bone. And let's see. And this gives us everything that's on the Beagle Bone. Some of these tool chains. It's kind of a process here, I apologize. Alright. Sorry for the length of the video. There's a lot of issues. I mean at least we got it connected so you can see how to connect it. There's just little things we need to do to make sure that it compiles correctly. Now we have to change the last two letters of that to actually a few letters. So go B B I F F. Yes. Alright, and now we need to do the same thing, but we need to do it for uh, C++. Don't forget to type sudo. a lot of a difference and now you have to do the software that which would be uh, HF. Alright so you're done there. Alright now let's do the arm chain. So we'll go new. Uh, let's go to project. This is a whole new project. New project. Do C plus plus build. 
Let us do C project. Next. Let's see here for settings. We need to add C compile. Project name is called video. Let's close this out and do it again. And then we need to do it to capture it on that. Let's do the project. So let's close this. Let's go back. So you're, you know you're basically connected now. Let's see if we can just like command to it. I'm gonna conclude it here. I mean, I got you connected. Uh, I got you through Eclipse. Um, basically, all you gotta do is make a new project, G plus plus, C plus plus, and you can just link it over to the Google Bone. So I'm gonna leave you here. Okay. Thank you for watching, and uh, hope it was successful as this whole video. Again, I apologize for the length. Um, I know the class. It, it seems pretty difficult, but I really recommend it to everybody. Thank you. Have a great night.